Wes Montgomery. With the help of Lady Jane and and Margaret, we were at last going to start making the film and rehearsing for the play. We'd get the Claudia Cardinale of John Wahai, Mina Gayama, to appear in the festival opening wearing a negligee, and I'd sell tickets to the girls at Coca and Asahi, as well as to the radio tubes at Yarmate High, boasting that this would be the first rock festival ever staged in Suspo. The teachers ignored what was happening, but, piled on my desk at school every morning as the word spread, I found bouquets of flowers and stuffed animals and boxes of chocolates and girls' personal histories complete with photos and letters saying, I'm all yours, body and soul, and cash and checks and savings passbooks. Not quite, but it is true that I spent the entire day each day with an irrepressible smile on my face. A dharma, however, whose sad destiny it was to have been born practical and realistic, tried to keep my free-soaring spirit anchored firmly to earth. A dharma, he was a, and I were drinking cafe au lait at the coffee shop boulevard, waiting for the two girls to appear. What the hell? This is just coffee-flavored milk. A dharma couldn't understand cafe au lait. I told him that this was what Rimbord had drunk when he was writing a season in hell and that anyone who didn't appreciate the taste wasn't qualified to discuss art. Rimbord? Bullshit. Rimbord drank absinthe when he wrote poetry. Who told you that? It was in a book I read. Adama was reading more and more all the time. Being a grind by nature, once he got interested in something he really delved into it. Not long before, it would have been easy to snow him on something like this, but it was getting a lot harder. He'd given me an earful, just the other day, about Battaler's The Guilty Party, The Plague by Camus, and Heisman's Against the Grain, all of which he'd just finished. I'd acted surprised that it had taken him so long to get around to them, but privately I was a bit put out. It wasn't that I didn't read a lot myself, of course. The Complete Sartre. Proust's Remembrance of Things Past, Joyce's Ulysses, the world classics and masterpieces of Oriental literature series published by Chuko Books, Carwood as the world's great thinkers and sacred texts of the world, the Kama Sutra, Das Capital, War and Peace, the Divine Comedy, the Sickness unto Death, the collected works of John Maynard Keynes, the Complete Luxx, the Complete Tanner's Archie. I knew the titles of all of these books by heart. But the works I really loved and actually read and underlined in red ink were the great comic book serials, Joe Tomorrow, The Way of the Dragon, Muanasuk the Ronin, and The Genius Bakibon. Anyway, I was in no mood to let Adonis intellectual progress get me down. Today, after discussing our film and play with the Angel and Anne Margaret, we were going to meet Mina Gayama of Junwa at the Jazz Place to negotiate her appearance in the opening event. Nothing, and nobody, could wipe the smile off my face on a day like this. Ken, where we gonna hold the festival? Why did Adama always have to get so realistic about things? Didn't he have any imagination, any dreams? I felt sorry for him. No doubt it had to do with the environment he'd grown up in. I grew up surrounded by sunlit orange groves, cool mountain streams glinting with silvery fish, and ballrooms where American officers and their families waltzed the night away. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration. The neighborhood had four scraggly micken trees, a muddy pond with goldfish in it, and a house full of whores who held marathon screaming matches with jizz, but at least there weren't any slag heaps. Slag heaps didn't have a speck of romance in them, they were symbols of the mad rush to rebuild the economy after the war. Slag heaps didn't inspire dreams. We need a hall of some sort, I said. No shit. What are you grinning about? You think you can make a festival happen by drinking coffee-flavored milk and grinning? What are we gonna do, rent the gym at Northern High? They probably wouldn't let us. Of course not, you idiot. I guess we got a problem. You need permission if you want to use the community center and the citizens hall and all those places. You have to write a long description of what type of program you're going to put on, and the producer has to stamp it with his personal seal. You got a personal seal, Ken? Shit. I hadn't thought of that. 
And what are you gonna do about the tickets? Hand M out. Sell M. No, I mean where you gonna have M printed. If we go to some printer in town, they'll report it to the school. He had a point. I wouldn't have thought it possible, but his slag heap realism had succeeded in wiping the smile off my face. You wanna print M by hand? A thousand tickets. Forget it. Can't have hand printed tickets anyway. To do it by hand or have them mimeographed was out of the question. We weren't talking about invitations to a birthday party or talent night at an old folks home. So do we call off the festival? Adama said. He seemed to be enjoying my discomfort. It was all he could do to keep a straight face. Listen, he said after a pregnant pause, my brother's at Hiroshima University. I'll get him to have the tickets done at the campus print shop. They use real photo setting, not just typing or whatever, and since the print shop belongs to the university, it'll be about half price. As for the hall, you know the workers hall near the entrance to the base? They use that place for union meetings and stuff, so there's no real regulations or anything. All you need is a guarantor to put his seal on a form, and it doesn't matter who he is. The seats are removable, too, so if we have everybody sit on the floor, I figure we can get about 800 people in there. A thousand, no, but, hell, there isn't a hall in Suspo that'll hold a thousand people. Even the citizens' hall won't hold more than 600, and that's counting the balcony. Adama was consulting his notebook as he reeled this off. The stage is about 5 meters deep. That's more than enough space for the drums and amps and everything, right? You got six lights on either side of the stage, and a projection room, too. I guess you don't need a projection room for an 8mm film, but you need to make the place dark or you won't be able to see anything, right? Well, this place already has black curtains for all the windows. You can make it dark in about three minutes. Pitch dark, the way you want it. Oh, yeah, and the guarantor. I know this guy from the basketball team who graduated last year. He's pretty spaced out, and I already asked him to help. All we have to do is buy a ready-made seal and use his name and address, okay. Well, what do you think? You're a genius. Café Olé is coffee-flavored milk. Slag heaps are the pride and glory of Japan. I pressed my palms together and bowed to him. He calmly told me to can the crap and to decide on the design for the tickets and get it to him by the following day. Yumi-chan and I were talking it over, and... Well, there are only two people in the play, right? The angelic Lady Jane said this between quiet sips of English tea, the drink of aristocrats. She was sitting next to me. And Margaret was next to Adama. She'd practically pushed Iwase off the sofa to claim that position and Iwase had had to move to the next table. Now and again, the angel's thigh brushed against mine. Each time that happened, the sofa we were sitting on was transformed into an electric chair. A powerful current shot to the top of my skull. My hair stood on end. It was hard to breathe. My crotch tingled. My throat went dry. My palms grew sweaty, and the lonely expression on Iwase's face faded from my field of vision. Right. Just two people, a boy and his older sister. Adama smiled knowingly. It was a smile that said my ulterior motive to get tight with our leading lady by rehearsing alone with her was transparently obvious. Well, see, I was thinking that Yumi-chan would be better for the job. I nearly dropped my glass. But I don't have half your talent, and Margaret told her. I still think you should do it. We already decided this on the way over, didn't we? Here's Aki-san, you know about the Performing Arts Festival last year, don't you? She won the judges' award for her Porsche. And she was only a second-year student. And Margaret covered her mouth and squirmed in her seat, saying, Stop it, I'm getting embarrassed. She was leaning against an armor, her massive breasts jiggling beneath her blouse. Oh, yeah, I read about that. Iwase said. I think it was in the PTA newsletter. Ken, didn't we plan to do an article on Sato-san? 
I felt the sofa being transformed from an ecstasy chair into something more like a wet toilet seat. The words shut the fuck up, Iwase, were on the tip of my tongue, but I figured they wouldn't win me any points, so I held them back and chewed on the rim of my glass. Adama had his head bowed and was laughing to himself. We can't use the drama club room, but I was thinking we could rehearse in the church I go to, Porsche the Bussity Christian said cheerfully, and I forced a smile, desperately trying to think of a way to insert a sexy bathtub scene into the script and to add another character, a girl the boy loved from the bottom of his heart. I quickly realized it was out of the question, though, and slumped down in my seat. It was out of the question because only five minutes earlier I'd been holding forth about how subtle, how revolutionary, and how pure and innocent the play was because it involved only two characters, and they were related by blood. Well, if you're sure you don't mind my doing it, and Margaret said, and I assured her in a feeble voice that nothing would please me more. Suspo Bridge had been the scene of the main battle in the campaign against the Enterprise. Spread out beyond it was the American Navy base. The Jazz Club 4 beat, a favorite hangout of Oasis and mine since our first year of high school, stood on a wide road lined with plane trees leading to the bridge. The club's interior had a particular smell we associated with black people. We called it the smell of the blues. It was in the counter, the sofa, the tables, the ashtrays. There had been nights when a sailor who was a dead ringer for Chet Baker and had a mermaid tattoo on his left shoulder played the trumpet, nights when black MPs took time out during their rounds to harmonize on St. James Infirmary, and nights when hostesses from bars that catered to foreigners, their hair bleached brown or yellow or red, got into fights, filling the air with the smell of cheap perfume as they swung and clawed and kicked at each other. The owner. A man named Adarki never gave us any flack even when we sat for hours over a single glass of coke. Adarki was always stoned on booze or pills or dope, and whenever he got really loaded he'd start to cry. Shit, he'd whimper through his tears, why wasn't I born black? I thought it was the perfect place to meet me Nagayama. We'd told the angel and Anne Margaret that the next bit of business only concerned the production team. There wasn't exactly any need to lie to them, and the fact that I only did so to spare Jane's feelings is probably better left and said, because it's just another lie. Actually, it had been Adam's idea. He figured that if I were confronted with three beautiful women at the same time I'd lose it entirely and scare them all off by saying something utterly insane. Here to meet somebody? Adarki said from behind the counter. Judging by how jumpy Ken is, it must be a woman. Adama nodded. She's the number one star in John Wahai, I explained. Adarki gave a scornful little laugh and turned his eyes permanently yellow and cloudy from all the stuff he took to the poster of Charlie Mingus on the far wall. Adarki didn't have much interest in women. He once told me he'd done so much booze and pills and dope that he couldn't even get it up anymore. Seriously. Though, she's a real knockout, I said. Which reminds me, what do you recommend for background music? Something light, you think, like Stan Getz or Herbie Mann? Adarki nodded. I know just the thing. We got a new West Montgomery record in, got strings on it. Mood music, man. Great, I said. That's perfect. But I should have known better than to trust some weirdo who went around weeping and wailing about not being black. When Minagayama appeared, decked out in a red satin blouse, tight black jeans, silver sandals, 18 carat gold earrings, and pink nail polish, Adaki grinned to himself and put on Coltrane's ascension. John Chikai and Marion Brown were making their alto saxes squeal like stuck pigs, and Minagayama grimaced at the noise her arm and eyes reduced to dark inverted commas. We all went back to Boulevard. Even as I sat the pitching the festival to Minagayama, I was painting a little picture in my mind of that evil bastard Adaki going into withdrawal, falling down in the street with convulsions, and being run over by a truck. And I mean, a festival. She said, holding a highlight between pink fingernails and puckering orange-painted lips to expel a stream of smoke. 
at that moment, for the first time in my life, I realized that a woman's lips could have something that not even Rimbaud's poetry or Hendrix's guitar or Godard's editing techniques came near. If only I could make lips like that mine to do with as I pleased, I thought. A guy would eat coal if that's what it took to win such a prize. I explained festivals to Mina Gayama with all the passion of a man willing to devour an entire slag heap. I can't act, she said, crushing the ice from her drink between her teeth. You don't need to know how to act, I told her. You see, you've been chosen as a figurehead. A figurehead? Right. It's like I said earlier. We're talking about a festival where a thousand of the most progressive high school students in Suspo come together, without any help from their teachers or anyone else. We're doing it on our own. They have festivals in Tokyo and Osaka and Kyoto, all the big cities, but they're not organized only by people like us. I bet this has never been done even in New York or Paris. That's how amazing it is. Paris? That's right. Not even high school kids in Paris can pull off something like this. I like Paris. So, anyway, it's only natural that we'd want the most beautiful girl in Suspo to appear in the opening event of a festival this revolutionary, right? Mina Gayama stared at me wide-eyed, so taken aback she forgot to blow the smoke out of her lungs. Me? That's right. The most beautiful girl in Suspo. Right. Says who? Says the Northern High Student Council. It was unanimous. She stared at me and at Ama and Iwase in turn, then burst out laughing. Her laughter was loud enough to drown out Schubert's unfinished symphony, which was booming over the speakers in Boulevard. She pointed at me and said, What is this guy, nuts? Adama started laughing, too, and said, Exactly, three times and then Iwase joined in as well. I was pissed off but had little choice but to laugh along with them. The unfinished symphony was over before they all settled down. You guys are a riot, Mina Gayama said when she'd got her breath back. There were tears in her eyes from laughing so hard. All right, I'll do it. There'd been a change in the casting of the leading actress for my play, but at least the two finest specimens of talent and beauty in the English drama club had joined the festival staff. The foxy queen of the private Catholic girls' school, who had a massive following of Greaser fans, had consented to appear in the opening act. The spaced-out Northern High alumnus had, for a measly two free tickets, agreed to lend his name as guarantor for the use of the workers' hall and the tickets had been beautifully printed in the liberal arts department of Hiroshima University. I never got tired of gazing at those tickets. Date, November 23rd, Labor Thanksgiving Day. Time, 2 p.m., 9 p.m. Place, Suspo Workers Hall. Presented by E.I.R. Rock N. Roll, independent film, drama, poetry readings, happenings, surprises, excitement and thrills. All at the Morningwood Festival. The words were printed in bold type over a picture of a girl putting on lipstick and a volcano erupting inside an erect penis. Admission was 200 yen. Through members of Vera, the newspaper club, the English drama club, most of the athletic teams, Shiro Kush's gang of juvenile delinquents, and various rock bands, the tickets were distributed not only at Northern High but at all the schools in the area. E.I.R. was raking it in every day. I felt as if I was at the center of the world. But just as Rockefeller and Carnegie aroused the ill will of the poor, I was to become a target for gangs from other schools.